Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in once again. So, uh, doing a little, uh, I guess, a video on how I video my um, shows, my videos. How do I video my videos? Let's go that route. <laughs> uh, this is a question Henry Robbs put up a while back. Uh, I believe it was about two weeks ago or so. Um, yeah, I'm a little behind on things. That's usually how it goes. But, um, you know, Fourth of July weekend was not, you know very productive for me um, so I didn't get a lot of bench time out here per se at all I was kind of really wanting to hammer on the uh, transporter kit uh, did not get on that but that's okay we will get on it here eventually here real quick um, and all that good stuff so I just thought I'd show you um, I see some guys putting some videos up really cool on how they do their editing how they video their stuff how they kind of a start to finish from uh, beginning product to the end from what you guys see from where we how we're videoing things so I always like looking behind the scenes of everybody's stuff and see how they're doing it. Uh, everybody's got their own ways, tricks, tips, and whatnot. But other than that, I'll take you to the bench and I'll show you how I do my videos. And uh, like I said, I'll show you where I do my editing, uh, all that good stuff. And yeah, let's take a look. All right, guys, taking over to the bench here. Uh, this is kind of a little gist on, like I say, how we do all these. Uh, nothing too over the top. Uh, so I do have a long workbench here. I uh, built this garage or this room a while back. Uh, it's been over a year and a half now. And uh, it's basically two stations. So a, a cup mat usually sits down there uh, in front of that chair. And this is pretty much my domain down here. This is where I usually sit every time. So this is where I do all my building at. Uh, this is my build station here basically. So nothing too over the top. I uh, have some magnetic strips here. I keep all my kind of alligator clips on that I use all the time and I got another magnetic strip up here uh, so this is all my basic tools stuff I use on a normal basis when I'm out here working and other than that I have one of these 3M TAC uh, little clips I hold instructions on uh, I know a lot of us don't usually use instructions I get it but every once in a while like this one here is that Roadster 2-in-1 kit and it came with two frames um, so I thought, well, I'll just hang it up there to see what's what. Other than that, I keep everything just like, say, at arm's reach. Uh, this is all my kind of Malto pens, uh, paint markers, Sharpies, uh, what have you. is just different stuff here. And then I keep my glues, accelerator, um, you know, panel line stuff, everything just right here. The stuff I use all the time. And I love this, uh, they call it fun tack, but it's like that poster tack. Uh, that you buy that I just get that at Walmart for like a dollar something so it's pretty inexpensive and I use that to put on stuff um, you know that I'm painting like small stuff or something that doesn't have a sprue on it I can take and tack it to something and just use my little alligator clips so you can see a lot of these clips still have the blue stuff in there and like I say I just take it and I just chunk off a piece and and stick it on there so it works pretty good so now to keep my paints uh, pretty handy uh, just this side here is all my MCW enamels on the Tamiya lacquers and then moving on the other side over here uh, there's some of the acrylics uh, the little tester jars that everybody has tons of um, model master and some local paints in the back there is model railroad colors so yeah so that's pretty much my workstation here so try to keep it it's not always the cleanest uh, organized but it does the job uh, so after I get done painting, or, well, after I get done building everything or doing whatnot, most time it goes to paint. So we take it over to the paint booth. And, oh, yes, it is, it's been a minute. It's it's time for a cleanup here. So I got to get a new filter put in there. So I wrap this with the uh, Glad Wrap. It's that, um, it's that wrap right there. And it has adhesive on it, so it seems to be clean anyway, so I take this off here. But once I pull this off here, I mean the paint booth pretty much looks like brand new. So I always wrap this with it, just keep it clean. And I was watching uh, Rob Gray's channel here a while back, and he was talking about putting uh, kind of like that polyfill batting or whatever in for a filter. Because uh, like I said, that filter definitely needs to be replaced, so I picked some up. Um, so he did that on his channel at Time Machine Scale Models. And so I'm going to try that out and see how that works. Like I said, filter. I usually take that out. Uh, and I'll take it on my air compressor and air it off and clean it up real good. So I got some gloves and all that, and some shelving that I very rarely use because it's just in an inconvenient spot. That's got chalks and weathering stuff, and 
uh, extra parts and whatnot. And I got my spoons and uh, see there's a single stage badger up there. Got to get a hose for it. Uh, other than that, I have uh, a pache down here. It's a VL dual stage pache. Uh, I I like this. It's got a 0 .50 or uh, 0.5 needle in it. Uh, works pretty good, but uh, just the hose has just got a different end on it. So I got to get something to convert it over to plug into my little Amazon air compressor, which works pretty good. Other than that, I have my two um, workhorses here, my two mainstays airbrushes. This one here is my 0 .0, and I use this one mostly for primers and my lacquers. And this one's an Iwata, and this one is used uh, basically for all my enamels and the car overall sprays. I just like this one here. It, just, it seems to spray a lot better. Um, I don't know, just, it's, obviously it's a nicer airbrush, so it should spray a little better, right? Uh, but other than that, they both do really well. So that's what I do with that. So when I'm working on this here, um, I have that tripod, that mechanical arm you see hanging up down there. So I'll have that hooked uh, pretty much as a clevis. So I'll put the clevis like right here. And so I'll take my camera and it'll sit on the tripod about right here. So you guys have seen that many times. And if I'm going to do showing you some paint booth action, I'll take that clever, that mechanical arm, I'll swing it around, and I'll sit right here on my paint booth. So it works pretty good. Other than that, when we get done painting everything, uh, I take everything over and I put it in my uh, dehydrator, a.k.a. Susie Bake Oven. So everything goes in here. So everything gets painted. Um, that's Tony Lancer's... Uh, 69 Shelby uh, repainted that I showed you a while back I painted this one it's kind of that turned out almost bronzy looking I wasn't really happy with it myself I took it over to him he's like eh, it's not what I thought and I'm like yeah the same thing and same thing so so he had another bottle of paint so we repainted it I'll show you that in a bit that turned out a lot nicer so when I'm videoing my stuff uh, I use this setup here pretty high tech I get it so the chair I sit in over here I'll set this here and I got this other chair here I basically put them nose to nose and I have a little tripod sitting right here so that's what we do so I basically take my cell phone uh, which is all my videos have been done with this Samsung uh, Galaxy S10 Plus and I'll take a mountainous tripod. So this is the view you guys see right here most of the time. And as I'm sitting in the chair, which works out nice, is I'll be sitting here. And it's nice because I can take and put kits or whatever in the chair or whatever I'm going to show you. And as I'm talking to you, I can just grab it really easy, show it to you, whatnot, and put it on the bench, grab whatever else. So it works pretty slick. I mean, it's like I say, it's nothing over the top, no rocket science. It's just, it, it's convenient. You know, it works really good. Um, so like I say, I use a Samsung phone here. That's what I use the video with. And there's no case on it right now because it did have some volume problems a while back. And I thought, I had an OtterBox case. I thought that was a problem. But also, uh, every once in a while I'm out and about, I use this DJI gimbal. Um, and the, this here is the piece that snaps onto the phone. And with the case on it, it doesn't fit. And I know they make bigger ones for this. Um, so I might invest in something like that. Uh, this is nice because I can use this and it has an app that you go onto the phone, a Bluetooth to the device here. So you can run all the controls with the device here without having to touch the phone. So it works really good. And plus when you're walking, you don't get that weird jingle to it or move around. I'm still learning it. I've had it for a bit, but I just don't use it enough to get good at it. You know what I mean? So and to figure out all the settings on it because it's got a lot of stuff to it. Um, but I think once I get it honed in it, it does work pretty good. So other than that, I'll take and go over here, and this is the section here where I do all my make my thumbnails for my YouTube pages. When you guys see, you know, as you're scrolling through things, you see the thumbnail pictures. That's where these are done right here. And when I'm showing you guys things, like, uh, you know, open box review or something like that, or showing whatever, uh, once again, I use this mechanical arm here, and I mount my camera up here. So you guys have seen this shot multiple times. So that's how this is right here. And I can go through and do whatever. And after that, i uh, show you the finished product. I use this guy right here. So this is a 
actual just a regular turntable off a of record player and it's actually just a turntable so this is an old pioneer record player turntable my mom and dad had years ago uh, you can see it's a see the logo on it there so like i say it's just the base uh so what i did is i took a the turntable apart and like i say it's just the bottom with aluminum at least old school is probably all the new ones are plastic nowadays so I took the guts out of it, uh, took the piece out of the record player, and mounted it to this block of wood. So it's just a little arbor here, it just sits on, and it used to have a gear on the bottom. So it works pretty slick. I thought about motorizing it again, uh, just it'd be nice to, you know, so it turns on its own. That's alright, so right now I just spin it by hand, and go from there. But like I say, I think turns just super amazing smooth. So I've had a lot of you guys ask, where did you get this? You know, what is this stuff? And I'll show you here in a second. So this is just the 3M safety walkway stuff. I bought this at Home Depot. That was just the stuff you put on steps. So it works pretty good. Comes in this long piece here. Uh, it's got adhesive on the back, so it's pretty slick. So obviously I took and cut a piece, uh, laid out here, cut it out, and I took the other half, spun it around, and made that side. Just make a little simulated roadway and it's got kind of the asphalt look, so it's kind of cool. Um, it works for now, but in time I may change it up and all that good stuff. So once I get to this point, I'll take it in the house and edit it. So I'll show you guys that end of it here. Hold on. Oh, so as I come into the house, this is what I come into. A pillow tore up. Which one of you clowns did this, huh? Which one of you did this? Who did it? Lily, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Yeah, you always smile. You're the ones in trouble. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, who's going to clean it up? Huh? Are you cleaning this up, Lily? Did you do this? Did you do this? Smile if you did it. I know you did it. Did you make this mess? Did you? Did you make this mess? Yeah, I knew you did it. I knew it. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Wow. Okay. That's the joys of having dogs, I guess. You idiots. Idiots. Yeah, keep playing around in it. I see how it goes. So, it, this uh, troublemaker number one, this is a golden doodle. Her name's Lily. And troublemaker number two, that's a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's Tober here. So, yeah, he's a standard poodle. Yeah, you know you're in trouble. You both know you're in trouble, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, act all like, was it me type thing. I see how it is. Wow. All right. Time to clean this mess up, I guess. All right, guys. So after I uh, get done doing a video, which is done out in the garage in my model room, I come into the house here, and computer's in the back room here, and I sit here, uh, do my upload. Everything goes in the computer uh, via... Just a USB cord, basically, um, to the computer, and like I say, just download everything. Uh, once I get done doing my editing, uh, I do use Adobe Pro, uh, the PR software, and after I've done that, I burn everything to a drive, uh, just because my internet here is not the greatest. So I'll burn everything to a drive, and then I take it elsewhere and upload it. Because uh, other than that, it takes like 50 hours to upload something here versus anywhere else. It's like 10 minutes. So, so yeah, so that's this end of it. And we'll take you out and show the rest of it here. So yeah, so that's pretty much the uh, basics of it. And uh, so a while back, uh, Matthew over at Model Car Videos, he said, Hey, show us a video of your stash. Uh, I've showed you guys this before previously. Uh, nothing much has changed too much in here. Uh, just I had it kind of organized at one time. But, you know, you add and remove and all that good stuff. So that's pretty much the pile there. Uh, I have another little group over here. I'll show you here in a second. So we're on this wall. Uh, there's another stack of them here. I had to make another shelf uh, to put these in here. Um, I got a few kits sitting here. And on the floor over here, I have another pile of them here. I got to find a place for. And on the shelf here, there's some more kits. It's kind of not the most organized shelf here. Uh, these are unbuilt. 
another one of those trailers there. Uh, these kits down here, these are basically, they're already built. Um, some of these are models that's in the boxes that are not of that box. And there's a lot of them that are doubled up, just kits from back in the day. You know, the boxes are long gone, all that good stuff. And what have you. So other than that, I just have some stuff sitting around on the shelves. A uh, place I don't have any place to put them, basically. So they sit out, which I don't usually like leaving them out, out in the dust or whatnot. But it's alright, I dust them once in a while. So I got the old Bigfoot model from back in the day. Um, got the AMT Matchbox trailer in the background. I built that thing years ago. I'm surprised it's actually still decent shape. Made the decals on the printer. The decals that come in the kit, they're just kind of really yellow. Uh, they just don't look that good, so made those up. And it's sitting on a, I think that's a Ford Aero Max uh, frame there. I got the rest of the kit sitting over on the side. Uh, had a house flood years ago and the box got damaged and everything else. So it's, um, I get the rest of the kit. I just have to obviously get it out and do it one day. And I got some other builds sitting here. So you guys seen the Etzel build uh, on the channel previously. So it turned out pretty nice. And I had lost that hubcap centerpiece. And it's funny, a, a while back I was going through the room cleaning stuff and I found it on the floor. And I thought, oh my gosh, there's that centerpiece. It's that little chrome piece that goes inside there. And I thought, no kidding. So it's sitting over on the bench over there waiting to be glued back on. And then I got the old Superstone truck. This thing here was also built. Uh, whatever this truck come out to this model kit, uh, that's when that was built. So it's probably been about, what, eight, eight, nine years ago or so. I'm not really sure. Um, but once again, that was another one that's survived the time and it's just been sitting in a box. So I thought I'd get that out and just keep it on display. So it turned out pretty cool. Same as this, uh, couple down here. Um, you guys seen this T-Bird before and this is a Kale Rearboro Thunbird. That's a 1 16th scale. I built that a long time ago when I was a kid, a long time ago. And I think this case I bought was about the same age. So it's kind of scratched up. So when I was down to Detroit show um, last spring, I actually got third place for this T-Bird. Uh, I guess I could have did better, but I didn't leave the hood open so because that engine's really detailed, and they said I would have placed a lot better with that one. Um, so lessons learned. So like I say, it's kind of my first time showing stuff, so learning as I go. And top shelf here, I uh, got die-cast car in front here, and uh, I think everybody has one of these trucks in their pile somewhere, the old flare side Ford pickup and they got a broken wheel in back so it's got crab steering uh, there's a Shelby back there I think so yeah so just some odd stuff laying around uh, this old Mark's train that my dad had when he was a kid uh, it actually still works so this is probably early 50s I'm guessing if not late 40s probably early 50s uh, so I built a shelf for it to display it and all that good stuff so kind of going around the room some of my um, cards uh, just some awards and stuff from work, from mechanicing. And this cabinet here, uh, this originally was built for my model railroad stuff. And it kind of just slowly migrated into cars and trains, whatever. So it works out pretty good. Pretty proud of myself. This is the first cabinet I built. Um, even did dovetails on it, so it was the first time doing that. That worked out pretty nice. So like I say, it's just a, one of my only storage units in here. So I'll take the model kits and I'll move them around once in a while so i got led lights in this cabinet and these two models up top here uh, these two are ones that i've had for a long time when i was a kid built those and most of these other builds you guys have seen on the channel so from previous hand these are my ho scale uh, railroad collection some of them so i see a lot of these kits are dirty over here uh, a lot of these need to be cleaned up and whatnot so like I say these are HO scale engines all these engines in the case here are uh, DCC and sound so that's why a lot of them are up in here because they're my nicer ones that uh, car in the back there the caboose that's also has sound lights and all that stuff so that's pretty cool and we got some Tyco slot cars in here from back in the day uh, I found those in a box a while back some more builds that uh, you guys have seen. Yeah, there's another slot car there. I got a chassis of this slot car here. I don't know where the bottom of it was. That was always kind of a cool car. 
So yeah, then this uh, sign here, this was a 3D printed sign I made for the railroad stuff uh, back in the day. Um, you know, it was like one of those highway signs that you'd see like peeking over the trees on like a freeway or something. That's what that was supposed to represent. That's got LED lights and all that good stuff. So yeah, so when I got the 3D printer, started playing around with things. Other than that, got another cabinet down here. Uh, this has my diorama on here, which, yeah, I know, I need to get back on that thing. And got more railroad stuff down here. Uh, boxes of stuff. A um, bunch of Walther stuff. Um, even got my vintage Tyco 76 station. That was a kind of a hard kit to come by. And this thing's like mint shape. Other than that, tear in the box. And all my other older engines are down there. That's not DCC and more rolling stock. Same as here, more kits, um, railroad stuff. This all mounted train stuff down here, and sorted stuff up here. Got my plastics and strips and all that good stuff. So, yeah. So it's another table here um, that I built a while back, uh, just for more work area, so to speak. So also when I'm painting, uh, I also use this vent here. I had this a while back. I found I needed some more ventilation here, so. This just vents the outside. It's raining out right now, so I'm sorry. My allergies are just driving me nuts, so my um, voice is probably a little more aggravated, I guess. So I open that up, and I, there's also a filter on the inside of the garage. So when I spray, it gives me a little more uh, ventilation here. So other than that, it would basically suck the air out of the out of the plugs because I didn't have nothing else in here to vent. So I had to add something to it. Other than that, guys, uh, that's pretty much the, the room, a little gist of it. So it's a nice little serenity to come out here and work, um, you know, after a crap day at work or whatever going on. And uh, a lot of times my wife will go to bed early. She gets up in the morning pretty early. Uh, she goes usually about 9, 10 o'clock sometimes. So once she goes to bed or whatever and, you know, hang out with her, and uh, I'll come out here and do my work. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of a late owl out here and I do my stuff later at night just to kind of balance my time out so that is pretty much the logist of it and how i do all my videos and all that good stuff so like i say it's been working so far and uh we're learning as we go so other than that let me show you that model kit real quick and uh we'll go from there hold on so yeah so this turned out a lot nicer uh, from the other color i think that turned out pretty cool almost got like a gold hue to it if you look at it in certain lights. Here on the back here. So I thought that turned out pretty cool. It's just been sitting in the, the uh, dehydrator since it was painted. So it's not clear coat or nothing. It's just like say Tony can take a decal. He's going to put that gold decal on there so it should look pretty sweet with that on there. All the other parts are sitting in the oven. So we originally started out with Indian Fire Metallic, um, the MCW. Like I say, I painted it over um, primer gray, and I think I would have went red or something like that first. Uh, that would have looked really nice. So now that this is the base color, um, we paint it with this, uh, if I'm saying this right, Cordovan um, Metallic. So that's the color that's on it now. So this on top of that, uh, this is what we got. So I thought that turned out pretty cool. Using our little turntable here. So yeah, so it turned out pretty nice. So he's going to get this today and uh, get this put together. And we'll show it to you guys when uh, he gets that finished up. So pretty sharp looking. Okay, guys, other than that, like I say, that's the logist of my videos on how things get done. And how we edit it and put everything together. And all that good stuff. So... Uh, once again, I appreciate you guys checking out the channel and uh, following along. And we will see you guys on the next build. You guys have a good one. And we'll see you.